Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, June 13, 2019. I am Investor Boynes with the details. A joint communique was signed at Cabinet Room yesterday afternoon between the President of Ghana, Nana Akufo Adu, and Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez. The joint communique seeks to develop a cooperation between the two countries and has on its agenda a meeting in Ghana capital city Accra early next year to see how the two countries can develop and push economic relations between nations. Ghana's president Akofu Adu said they are looking forward to starting the cooperation which the diaspora will benefit from and by extension all the incentives. Very well laid out by the Prime Minister. Uh, the Joint Commission for Development Cooperation that we want to establish between our two countries and already a timetable has been given to its first sitting. I believe the first quarter of next year has been agreed for a meeting in Accra to see how we can develop and push economic relations between us. Uh, the South-South cooperation, is a lot of it is in talk. I think that concrete steps like what we began to take means that we'll begin to walk the talk and it's important that we do so. Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonzal said the Joint Commission will address issues facing both countries as they further strengthen their relations, which he said is of paramount importance going forward. PM Gonzalez assured the Ghanaian president that efforts will be made to push for CARICOM to adopt the proposal for the establishment of the Africa-Brazil-Caribbean Diaspora of African Commission. And which a number of matters would be hammered out, it would take place in Ghana. And in, 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 at CARICOM meeting in, in St. Lucia in July, I will get the acceptance I'll push and get the acceptance for the establishment of the Africa Caribbean, Africa Brazil Caribbean Diaspora of Africa Commission to, to do the kinds of solidarity and unity which His Excellency has been speaking about and to do so within our own strategic interest. So basically, all that I, 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 I want to say, and this, but this has been a great visit. The Ghanaian president welcomes the establishment of such a commission and said it also should be the focus at the next African States meeting in Miami in July, which he will be attending. Address other matters, including the ABC, the idea that uh, Prime Minister Gonzalez has been talking about with such passion. I think it's a very important idea because we see the groupings that are taking place in the world today who would be lacking and f confining ourselves again to being marginalized if we don't also wake up and see the necessity to strengthen and uh, create our own groupings that work for our, our interests. The visit of the Ghana president concluded with a cocktail reception at the official residence of the Prime Minister. At the event, the Ghanaian president was presented with a token of appreciation by PM Gonzalez. President Akufo Adu thanked the Prime Minister and all Vincentians for a wonderful visit, which he said was fruitful and promised to visit again in the not too distant future. By first of all, finding a way to solve the problem of transportation, how we we find a bridge over the Atlantic, and then the consequential things that will flow from that. We've continued those discussions, and I'm confident that very soon we're going to get concrete results out of them. So I want to thank all you all very much for coming out this evening to come and meet with me and uh, members of my delegation. We've had a thoroughly wonderful day here in uh, St. Vincent's and the Grenadines. And the moderator who said that one day I should come back and have a holiday here in the, in the islands is going to be surprised. I'll be here sooner than she thinks. Thank you and may God bless you all. At the reception, there were performances from a number of local artists who entertained the Ghanaian president and his delegation. Here is a snippet of some of the performances. Because we remember where we came from. As afro vincentians our ancestry lies within Africa, especially West Africa. G-H-A-N-A, -A, Ghana! Yes!
And we hope to see you again. Prime Minister, we love you. Listen. From the Padia to Victoria Park. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves, in an address to the nation today, made an appeal to all Vincentians, in particular the churches, to offer up prayers and give thanks for the historic feat achieved by SVG in securing a non-permanent seat on the UN Security Council. I humbly request fellow Vincentians, and I request of all churches in our country to engage their respective congregations perhaps this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, in thanksgiving and in prayerful consideration for the further upliftment of our nation and the world. Reflecting on the decade campaign leading up to the vote which was held last Friday, June 7th, PM Gonzales said it was not an easy journey and that he is happy the hard work put in by government officials and other persons paid off. Our triumph at the United Nations General Assembly is among other things an inspiration for our young people to set meaningful goals and work assiduously to achieve them. It is a reaffirmation of our off-stated principle that although we are not better than anyone, no one is better than us. We can all achieve a better world together. We start with our own individual efforts. Looking ahead, PM Gonzalez said despite SVG being a small island state, taking up its seat among 14 other nations on the UN Security Council from January 2020 will be a proud moment for the nation. The PM again thanked all the countries in the region and beyond which voted for SVG to be elected as a non-permanent member on the UN Security Council. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Gonzalves left the state today for an official visit to the Seychelles. He will be accompanied by Janelle Adams, Minister Councillor in the Office of the SVG High Commission to the United Kingdom. During his stay over in London, Prime Minister Gonzalves is expected to meet with several potential investors and will hold a town hall event for Vincentians in the United Kingdom. He is expected to spend two weeks in the Seychelles and SVG will be represented at the fourth sitting of the OECS Assembly to take place in Antigua on Monday, June 17, 2019. Among those in attendance will be Minister of Finance and Economic Planning Camilla Gonzalez, Minister of Agriculture Sabota Caesar, Leader of the Opposition Dr. Godwin Friday, and Opposition MP for the Southern Grenadines Terence Oliver. SVG's ambassador to the OECS and CARICOM, Alan Alexander, will accompany ministers Camilla Gonzalez and Sobota Caesar to the meeting of the OECS authority, which will also be held in Antigua on June 18. Head of a Cuban trade mission who paid a visit to SVG last week, Jesus Gonzalez, said he was impressed by the level of organization shown by the local business community. Speaking at a news conference last Friday, Gonzalez said their visit reveals some impressive information about this country's capabilities. Surprise. Uh, he promised that we will be surprised and we got a few surprises, still some more surprises to come. We realized that you do have uh, important industries, being a, a small country. But the industries and the facilities that we visited are indeed very well organized. As he said, we, we went to a metal industry. Uh, we also went to, to, uh, to the flour mill and, and to Kendrell's, which does uh, doors and, and some important items that are used in, in tourism and, and in construction. And we are most impressed. Uh, for what we saw. Gonzalez said the team is looking for companies which have export ready products which will lead to healthy trade relationships between SVG and Cuba. We want to, to find also in St. Vincent and the Grenadines some partners which could export some goods to Cuba and at the same time uh, enjoy some of the products that we do produce in our country. I think the best way to, to move ahead will be to, to establish a two-way venue in which we can 
uh, get to know each other better, which we do need to get each other better, and uh, to provide uh, facilitation for, for trade and businesses between both countries. The impression of the team is great. We, are, well, we very much appreciate the dedication, and we thank very much the ambassador because he's been hosting this uh, visit, and he's been trying to make uh, this visit a reality for a long time, and finally we've, uh, we've done so. Uh, this visit will not stay here. We plan to make a follow-up. We plan to establish synergies between uh, traders from Cuba and St. Vincent, and we're sure we'll get positive results in the near future. Thank you. Phase 2 of exercise trade wins will commence here tomorrow with an official opening ceremony to be held at the decommissioned E.T. Joshua Airport from 10 in the morning. Phase 1 of the exercise was held in the Dominican Republic from May 30th to June 8th. Phase 2, which will be hosted here, will also run for one week and will conclude on Friday, June 21st. Exercise Trade Wins is a combined joint exercise conducted in three phases focused on building the capacity of U.S. and Caribbean forces to better respond to natural disasters as well as land and maritime threats. A news release from the RSVG Police Force, which is hosting the exercise here, said participating countries look to improve security mission and humanitarian assistance and disaster relief responses through an exchange of knowledge and expertise. Exercise Trade Wins is approved by the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and is sponsored by the U.S. Southern Command. Minister of Finance and Economic Planning Camilla Gonzalez said a phased approach is on the way to make SVG the cleanest and greenest country in the Caribbean. Gonzalez was at the time speaking at a ceremony held last Saturday at the Brighton Beach to commemorate World Ocean Day. The day's activity began with a beach cleanup and a tree planting ceremony as part of efforts to restore the area's natural beauty and defenses against erosion. We plant fat pork and sea grapes along the dunes. We are going to try to restore some of the dunes using some, some geoengineering. And we are going to place educational signs along the way. So when you're going on your walk, you will see this is this kind of tree. You will learn about the importance of dunes. You will learn about the mangroves on the far end of the sea, on the far end of the beach. And you will learn about fisheries and the health of our ocean and coastline going forward. So you will be able to say to somebody, come down to Brighton Bay and let us hang out and let us have a good time. And the reason we are having this event today with the music and Rodney Spall and his band is to open people's minds to the possibility of this location as somewhere that you can have events. Because they didn't have a lot of events here ever. But once this becomes an attraction, people will be able to say, you know, there was, I remember there was a little stage here and Rodney and his band played some sweet music. Maybe we could have another event down on Brighton Bay in the future. And so we don't only restore it to keep it pristine, but we restore it to use and to enjoy for this community and for the entirety of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That's what we're going for. Minister Gonzalez said it is his hope that under the transformation plan, the Brighton Beach along with the Salt Pond can become major attractions for tourists and locals alike. Currently, the road to Salt Pond is being built and resurfaced. And then the facility that was there at the beach is being demolished so that we can build a new facility with gazebos, with stores, with a fire pit, so that when tourists come off the cruise ship, they will have somewhere to enjoy and to spend some money. And when locals want to enjoy Brighton Salt Pond, there will be a facility there for their, them for their, for, their, for their use. The two beaches therefore have the potential together to become a major attraction in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And if you follow the coast further around, you get, as Mr. Harry said, you get to the South Coast Marine Park, which will be a protected area. You get to Villa Beach, which is already a major tourist area, but we're going to develop it and protect it further. And you realize that across the southern corner of East St. George, you have the potential to be the guardians of some of the most beautiful stretches of coastline anywhere on mainland St. Vincent. And that is the objective that we're going for here today. 
The East St. George MP said with a ban on sand mining at the Brighton Beach and that of styrofoam, the government is also looking to ban certain plastic materials. He said these measures will foster a cleaner and greener SVG. All of that restores this bay to the place of prominence where it once existed in younger people's minds. And that's the objective here, to make this bay a special place again in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. If I was Donald Trump, I would say make Brighton great again. But we're going to make this be great again. That's, that's the plan for we have. And then going forward later this year, we have banned styrofoam. We're going to start to ban certain plastics in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. So certain plastic bags, not everything, but certain plastic bags, we're going to start phasing them out. You're going to have to bring your own bag. Or you're going to have to use a paper bag. But we have to have a crocus bag. Or something like that. Because, and we did it before as people, you know. Plastic just come the other day in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But we are going to protect our environment by getting rid of these plastics in our environment. Getting rid of them in our bodies, getting rid of them in our environment. So we're taking a phased approach to make St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I repeat it, the cleanest and the greenest country anywhere in the Caribbean. Carnival Beat is coming right up. The Adrenaline Mass Band is confident that its presentation this year will give them the opportunity to be among the top three places in the Mass Band of the Year competition. This year, Adrenaline's presentation focuses on ancient warriors under the theme Road of the Valkyries, which was chosen by one of the band leaders. The band's presentation is made up of eight sections, including three male sections. Band leader Denise Ashton said that last year's result was very disappointing, but it motivated them to push harder this year so that they will be among the top three winners. Okay, we have a blue and pink. That one is called Gundal. We have predominantly orange. That is Hersia. Our green costume is called Kara. Um, we have the one right behind me here. It's called Brunhill. And uh, this next pink here, it's called A. Okay, this year we had the challenge of um, spot space for our display, or tent per se. We ended up having to rent a showroom and having to build our mass at my home actually. So we are in two places which is a bit difficult because sometimes you may, may want to work on something and it's at the showroom while you're at your home and you need to see what it looks like. Okay, and without our fantastic sponsors, we would not be able to pull it off. So we would like to give much praise and thanks to each and every one of our sponsors that came on board for a 2019 presentation. Ashton said that one of the main challenges they were faced with this year was to find a place to set up their mass presentation as they had to relocate from their previous mass tent. This year, actually, I'm going to speak it loud and I'm going to speak it proud. Mm -hmm. We have brought a concept, a theme that I know it's a winning theme. And at the end of the day, we'll see, you know, what the judges think about it. But we, this is our 12th year and we have gone through the ringer. We have studied what it takes, you know, what you need to do to arrive at this point and we feel that we have arrived at this point this year. Last year was not in terms of, I don't know what it was, but we were in the bottom half of the, the rankings for last year, which I don't understand. People with the same concepts and um, type of mass that we have were in the top half while we ended up in the bottom half for whatever reason. Well, I guess the judges know. So I hope at least they did their little studying up and they know what how to judge based on concept and color and impact and all that. So, well, I actually went to a judge's workshop for myself to see what it is that they need to do and so on. So I hope this year that all is well and everybody's on the same page. Ashton is urging masqueraders to be part of the adrenaline experience this year. Located on the ground floor of the Baines building, that's the big blue building next 
to Bank of St. Vincent, that's at Heritage Square area there. Um, after you come into the second gate, the second sets of gate, after you leave the bank, we are, you have to pass the stairs and then you come into the next door. We are right next to the hair salon. Yeah. And um, we still have some sections that are available. Uh, the price range from 700 and up. We are encouraging folks to come in. You know, we do give discounts, so you can come in and see what we have in store for you. Adrenaline is an all-inclusive band where we give you breakfast, we give you lunch, you get unlimited drinks, we have road security, we have good vibes all day long. So, you won't, I can guarantee you a fantastic time if you play mass with adrenaline. Oh, yeah.